All right, so I want to explain some of these settings. So Turbo Boost Short Power Max is the maximum power you're going to give the CPU for a short period of time. And that time window is specified in this value here. So over here, I've said that the CPU can use up to 50 watts for up to five seconds, and then it will revert back to 34 watts. We can see this in action here right now. I'm going to launch this app called IDA64 Extreme, and I'm using the st system stability test. I'm going to hit start. You can see, look, it shoots up to three, 2.9, and it's sucking up 50 watts. After five seconds, it's now dropped down to 33 watts, and it's hitting 2.9, 2.7 gigahertz. It's not thermal throttling, but it is power limit throttling because it needs more power if it wants to use all six cores. So by default, it tries to turbo with 128 watts for 28 seconds, and then it will drop down to 125 watts. That's the default settings. And let's see what happens if we use that. Hit start. Look, it's gonna shoot all the way up, it's demanding 50 watts. The power limit is 125. It's going at 3.7 gigahertz, 3.3, 3.4. But as you can see, the temperature has hit 100 degrees. The fans are spinning up. And it's probably gonna get into a bad state very soon. There you go, it's too hot. It's starting to throttle, you can see the lines coming down here. And it's throttling all over the place. Now you can save this state once it's running. If you drop the wattage to use less power, for example, I'm gonna put it on something really low. I'll put it on 30, hit apply, continue. What I'm also gonna do is I'm gonna set this one to 30 as well. Because for that 28 second window, it's gonna try turboing over. So now we're at 30 watts. We see that it's starting to stabilize at 2.9. Just gonna drop it down a little bit further, just to calm it down a little bit. But now it's slowed down now to 25. So now it's using the 25 watts that we've set here and it is slowing down its speed. Now, what you need to understand is the RAM inside this computer uses what? The GPU inside this computer uses watts and the CPU inside this computer is whereas other components uses watts. The GPU uses 65 watts. The RAM, depending on how much you got, would use a certain amount of wattage. For here, I'm using four to five watts over here. So you should tweak your computer depending on how much RAM you've got and more importantly, if you're plugging in an external monitor, because the more processing you're doing in your computer, the more heat will be generated and the more you'll have to play with. So personally, I don't, I don't need excessive wattage for my CPU because most of the tasks that I do fast are mainly dual core operations, which are like games, that kind of stuff. And when it comes to six cores, I'm happy with having a, a slowed down clock speed because I don't want to have it get into that bad thermal throttling state. So I'm going to set the actual power limit to something low by default. Let's just make it 35. And I'm going to set the, the power time to five seconds. Hit apply. Now I'm going to restart the test to show you how that plays out. As you can see, even though it's set to 35, it, does, it can boost over the base clock speed if you're using less than six cores. I'm gonna start it up again now. You can see it's going at 2.9. The power it's demanding is slightly less than 40, 36, 35, and it's hovering around the 2.9 state. The temperature is 87 degrees, 91, 94, 95, 93. So it's hovering around the area. So I'm getting slightly higher than the i7 at this temperature. Now you can play with this further. Personally, I like having a quiet system. So for me, dropping it down even further to 25 watts. I've now downclocked the amount of watts I'm giving it, but it's still going higher than the base i7 base clock speed. 
but the temperature now is going at 80 degrees. Now, depending on the kind of games you're playing, depending on the kind of functions you're doing, 25 watts might be good enough for you. For example, if I was to turn this test off and let it finish off the operation, you can see that it will boost all the way up to four gigahertz. So it's still got the capability to run fast, as long as you're not using all six cores. But when you start using all six cores, it's gonna need more power than what this computer can give. If you look at the power brick, the power grip supplied by these computers only give 87 watts. So if you're using more than 87 watts, you're gonna to have to get draw power from the battery. So if you're constantly drawing power from the battery to compensate from the lack of power coming from the power adapter, you're gonna be defeating the battery life of your battery. If you've got Apple Care, you probably don't care that much, but it's still a good idea to try drawing as much power as possible only from the power adapter. So that's my logic. I, I don't like drawing too much power. I only like drawing enough power from my power adapter and no more. So I, I don't mind having a down clock CPU, as you see, it's dropped down to the base frequency. And what I'm gonna do now, I'm gonna show you how this plays when I'm playing a game, uh, an intensive game. And I'll have this tool up to show you how fast it goes. So if you check it out here, you can see that 4.2, 4.1, 3.8, 4.0, 4.3, it's still going fast because it's not using that many cores in this game in particular. The temperature has gone up because it's using a lot of the GPU because GPU causes temperature. That's sucking up 65 watts because it's a graphically intensive game. But you're still getting fast speeds as long as you're not using all of the six cores. And I'm playing the game now. Seems very smooth. Really nice gameplay. And this one's using 3.3, 3.5, 3.4 gigahertz. And it's only using 20% of the utilization because it's only using a certain number of cores. Just want to show you how Synbench performs with these settings. So here it's nowhere near as fast as we know it can be, but we're getting quieter fan operation and we're getting more stability. So less drawing from the battery, more drawing completely from the power supply. So for me, it's an overall better experience. I'll show you Geekbench. It's getting 4.4, 4.5. It's because it's loading up the program. So Geekbench straight away hits 4.6 and then it drops down to 2.9, shoots up a bit. So even though we've limited our CPU, you can see that the single score is still going really fast. The multi-core has, has been affected, but that's all right, as long as it gives a more stable experience for me. Just rounding this up, I just wanted to show you when you launch IDA64 Extreme, to access the stability test, you wanna go inside tools and then system st stability test. And that's what gets this nice window with Intel XTU, I'll launch it. And this is what it looks like. You go inside advanced tuning, you get to, it just says, don't alter the frequency because it may cause damage to your processor. Product warranties may not apply if the processor is operated beyond its specifications. So pretty much if you're overclocking, if you're, make, if you're using more watts than the specification, it may void your warranty. But if you under what it, that should be fine. Don't quote me on that. I always ask your lawyer. I hold no responsibility. Me personally, I w I'd like to reduce this further because everything I do is mainly GPU bound. And I'm kind of happy with that setting. You can always have a play and find out your perfect setting, but I wouldn't go anything above the 125 on either of these, which is the default and 28 on, on this one. I'd go less and I probably recommend to go less because when, you, when you're when you using more power than what the power adapter can give you, again, you're gonna be eating into that battery to get the power from. And that's just gonna you know make your battery lose its cycles quicker. All right, I hope that was useful. And let me know how your system's performing and what kind of settings you guys recommend. Because, you know, I might not be the most aggressively uh, powered person, but it'll be interesting to see what kind of speeds you guys get. The ones with 16 gigabytes RAM, I've got 32, or people using eGPUs, how that 
mixes things up. So let me know.